when I was first converted, I was very dispensational, very premillennial. As antinomian, I, I didn't see the need for the law of God as being the schoolmaster that leads us to Christ. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul, but I didn't seem to believe it then. I was very anti the law of God, and I was very much a hit and run evangelist. So in my early Christian walk, I was very much just concerned to get out the gospel because time was short, the rapture was coming any time, we wouldn't see the end of the year. And so there was no point in long-term planning or establishing colleges or schools or, or planning for the next generation. I couldn't think uh, beyond much the next month or so because I was so focused on these are the last days, these are the last hours, where we, we've got to make every minute count. And I did a lot of evangelism, but I don't know how deep it went and how effective it was. I was zealous, but I think it was a zeal without knowledge. But then I read the book, The Puritan Hope by Ian Murray. And this opened up to me a whole new world by pointing out that some of the greatest missionaries in history were Calvinists and were post-millennial. Not that I knew what any of those things were, but when I realized that the father of modern missions, William Carey, was a post-millennialist and a Calvinist, I thought, I don't know what that is, but I better find out and I better get it because if that motivated him, it, it's obviously good enough for me. And David Livingston, the best friend Africa ever had, that he was a Calvinist and a post-millennialist. And, and so at that stage, I had a very negative end times view. I was very defeatist, retreatist, uh, end times uh, type. But as I got into the scriptures and started to understand what these reformed forefathers of ours, these uh, great examples in the faith were, I saw that we're not just trying to snatch a few souls en route to an eternity. We, we are called to make disciples of all nations, teaching obedience to all things that the Lord has commanded. The great commission of the Lord Jesus Christ is far greater than making converts. We're to make, not decisions, but disciples, teaching obedience to all things that the Lord has commanded. Not only disciples of individuals, well, that's where it starts. Not only disciples of families, that's vital, that's the building block of Saudi. Not only disciples of congregations and communities, of course but disciples of nations, not only some nations, all nations. And as the greatness of the Great Commission gripped me and the cultural mandate to go and take dominion and multiply and, and to fill the earth and to bring the Lordship of Christ to all areas of life, this gripped me and I began to understand we are not working at uncertainty. Christ must rule until Satan has not one inch of territory. And the day will come when the Earth will be as full of the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the seas are full of water. When every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And as I came to understand more of the doctrines of grace and the sovereignty of God and of the Lordship of Christ in all areas of life, this energized my ministry and I think it made it go deeper and further and wider and in every way improved it and, and maximized it so that I wasn't doing less evangelism as a reformed Christian but more evangelism and a lot more discipleship and a lot more depth. And more than that, I was laying more solid foundations before my evangelism. I didn't rush to the cross. I took the people through the law first because I saw until people have a real understanding of their sinfulness and of their need of salvation, until they fully understood the holiness of God and the sinfulness of man and their personal guilt before God, they weren't ready for the gospel. And we didn't need to fill the church with any more false converts and half-saved, semi-saved, pseudo-saved, wimps, wet weeds, and all that is today undermining the effectiveness of the church where you've got these worldly people who claim to be Christians, but their lifestyle is no different from the, from the church and from the world. We, we just looked at this and said, the church has been swamped with the unsaved and with worldliness, and, and we've got to have a revival of purity and of holiness and of the fear of the Lord. So for those people who are excited about evangelism and outdoor evangelism, but they stumbled by the fact that so many reformed Christians seem to be aloof from hands-on activism, I would say, well, don't judge the reformed faith by some of the people who claim to be reformed. Many of them are more deformed than reformed. What we need is to get back to the reformation doctrines that the reformers pointed to. The motto of John Calvin was promptly and sincerely in the service of my God. And his symbol was a heart aflame in the hand of God. Now, that's real Calvinism, a heart aflame in the hand of God, 
promptly and sincerely in the service of my king. That's the kind of Christianity we need. Too many people today have got the Reformed faith on ice, in the deep freeze. They've got the facts, but it's in their head and it's not in their heart and it's not affecting their hands and it's not affecting their feet. We've got to put feet to our faith. We need to be on the streets. We've got to be in the mosques. We've got to be in the prisons and the hospitals, wherever it takes, on the web, in the universities. Where are the people? The Great Commission is to go into all the world. And so we mustn't just stick in our ruts. The only difference between a rut and a grave is the depth. And we don't want to get into a rut or a grave. We, we've got to be visionaries and understand the breadth of the Great Commission, the greatness of the Great Commission. Christ has all authority. He has commanded us to go to all nations, to make disciples of all nations, and he has promised to be with us for all time. A great claim, a great command, a great commission, a great promise. The greatness of the Great Commission. This, to me, epitomizes where we should be as reformed evangelists, disciple makers. We mustn't settle for less than that.